Join me right now on Kumite TV is LFA lightweight champion Harvey Park. What's going on, Harvey? Not much, man. How are you tonight? Good, good, man. Um, first thing is like, who is Harvey Park? You know, like a lot of people know you from the fight game, but who are you? You know, what's your background? What is your upbringing? Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I'm I'm like an all American dude. Uh, I, it, you know, uh, I don't know. It's you know, I I went to small school. I played football. Uh, um, you know, I I joined the military. Then I. I want, I've always wanted to be a, a cop since I was young, so I joined the military, I did military police, got out, went right into like corrections and then into law enforcement. So, you know, uh, that is, it's pretty cliche, like, you know, uh, my story. Being in the military, you know, being in law enforcement, mentally you have to be pretty strong. You know, how much has that carried over into your MMA career? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, like, it's just care, you know, I'd say like you have to have a certain type of character for either one, you know, and uh, I don't know if those, uh, you know, created the, you know, my character or my, uh, you know, whatever it is that makes me good at either. You know, I think it was probably something that uh, is, you know, from a long time and uh, it's just kind of found its way into both. And it's, you know, uh, just something that I enjoy in both of them. Being a good representative, you know, of MMA, you know, being just a good representative of law enforcement, how important is that for you, you know, when you go out into public and, and do interviews and, and uh, you know, just in in on TV? and Because that's what's going to come for you in the future. Mm, you know, uh, it's just important to me uh, to represent myself and uh, what I believe in, you know, and like who I am as a person. And, uh, you know, and it's representing, you know, the, my veterans or, or law enforcement and whatnot, but you know, it's not a, it's, it's not hard and it's not, I don't, I don't want to say it's not important because it's important, but, uh, it's just who I am. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not faking anything. I'm not trying to make a gimmick or anything like that. So it's not, it's not difficult. It's just, it's just real natural for me. What do you think of all these guys nowadays with these gimmicks, you know, and, and it works for some and it doesn't work for others. Hey man, it, you know, when it's a gimmick, you could see when someone's playing a part and it's not them. And then when it's really someone and that's just them, you know, it's just organic and then that's them as a person, you can see it. And the ones that, you know, it, it's kind of just who they are, they sell good. And, you know, and, and, uh, there's a reason people are copying them and they're trying, and there's people you trying to use that gimmick because they see, you know, it works so well and it, it sells tickets and it, you know, sells pay-per-view. So, you know, I'm not mad at anyone, uh, you know, trying to make money and, you know, build a name, uh, you know, sometimes talking in trash and being a little bit brash or whatever, you know, it definitely works. So I, I get where it's coming from. All right. Let's talk about, uh, your last fight. You know, you captured the lightweight title in April at LFA 64, first round finish. It was a, a beautiful ending to the first round. Talk about that fight and the, the how the momentum will carry on into your next opportunity. Uh, you know, the, the, the fight was tough. Uh, my opponent, you know, he's, he's, he's re really good, you know, and when you're fighting guys at LFA, especially at the upper echelon coming from, you know, world-class gyms, you know, they're, they're UFC caliber guys and they're just waiting for their break the same way I am. So, you know, just, uh, hats off to my opponent. He, he was, you know, an amazing fighter and I'm keeping an eye out on him. I know he'll, uh, you know, probably be back and challenge him for the title or something big. Uh, you know, the fight came out, it took me a second to, uh, get his time and he was doing a little bit, uh, uh, different than what I was used to. But, you know, once I figured it out, um, I, I got him, I caught him with a good shot, you know, and, uh, I throw heavy ones. So, you know, it only takes one sometimes and I got him on the right spot. Um, you know, momentum, it, it's, it's been good for me. You know, it's been nonstop. I think that fight kind of propelled me into, into this, uh, contender series. And, uh, you know, the best thing is it, it's pretty quick. I didn't get time to eat too much. I didn't get time to relax too much. So, uh, I went right back into training camp. I've had a long camp and, uh, you know, my weight is good and uh, cardio is good. Everything that, you know, sometimes you might say, man, I wish I had a couple more weeks. I don't need it. You know, it's all it's all where it needs to be. What are uh, some of the go to foods that you, you know, you enjoy outside of camp? Ooh, um, if I if I'm not so uh, 
I, I, I like to make my own cheesecakes. That's like my main thing. I, uh, I, I looked up, I looked it up man, because I love it. And you know, uh, I don't want to be out there buying one every time I feel like you can make one at the price you can get one slice. So I'll make, I'll make, uh, just plain cheesecakes. That's like my favorite dessert. And then, uh, um, I like pho. I just eat, I eat so much of that. And then, uh, uh, being in New Mexico, like you're a product of your environment, dude. So I love hot food and just, uh, we got some really good Mexican restaurants. So Mexican food, uh, I eat Korean barbecue. I eat it all, man. There's nothing that I don't, I don't eat. August 6th, you're taking on Omar Morales. After watching some film on him, you know, what are your thoughts? What, you know, how do you assess his skill set? Uh, you know, just like all my opponents, I, he, he's got a high skill set. He's a good striker and he's dynamic. Um, but the good thing for me is I've been fighting, you know, good fighters for, I, I want to say, you know, my last seven, eight fights. I feel like any of those guys could, uh, you know, could be in the UFC, you know, or can fight at the highest level. So, you know, that it ain't nothing new. And, I, you know, I'm just used to fighting real, you know, real good guys. So uh, he, he's a good striker. He's got some submissions um, coming from, uh, you know, I think it's uh, Venezuela. You, he, he's got seven and zero, oh, but you never know. And, you know, some of those countries, he might have 50 fights, then, you know, 40, 44 of them we never heard of because it was, you know, it wasn't sanctioned or something like that. So, you know, uh, just taking him very serious and, and uh, preparing really hard for him. Yeah, you're definitely right. You know, out in uh, China, you know, I'm like right next door and the uh, guys yeah. fight like every week and yeah. they get to the big promotions and they say they're, 10 and 2 you know and i know yeah. that they've had like 60 fights so it's very oh, yeah. hard to you know gauge somebody coming from a country where they don't uh, record all the fights True. so you know, that's a great mindset to have man against a guy like him you know um throughout your career you know you've been getting finishes but do you see yourself kind of finding the opportunities you know easier now you know in your recent fights you know have you do you feel like it's been slowing down for you in the cage um, well, yeah, I'm definitely getting more comfortable. The more fights, you know, the more comfortable I get. And I think the more comfortable you get, the, you know, the more techniques you can use. The, the, there's things that you might've been doing, you know, in practice for years and, it, it, you know, you just got to get to that, uh, level of like comfortability in there and have the experience to actually do them in the cage. So, um, you know, uh, I, I feel like the more fights I get, the more I calm down, the more, you know, the more I'm still thinking, the more, the more it's uh, of a chess game instead of just going, you know, going, going crazy in there. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think the more fights I get, the, the more finishes are coming. Talk about the coaches that have molded you throughout the years and the type of impact they have had uh, on your life. Mm, well, you know, uh, my main coach is Eric Swan. And uh, as much as he's, you know, coached me, for fighting he is you know show me you know how to be a professional how to you know just a lot of a lot of different things about you know just being a, a good human and um so he's he's as much a life coach as he is you know my my uh main mixed martial arts coach and uh my uh my boxing coach you know i have a special relationship with every coach and so my boxing coach is from mexico we he don't speak he speaks as much English as I do Spanish, which is very little. You know, he probably speaks a lot more, but he don't he don't let on. But uh, we box every day, ten rounds, and um, you know, and the beauty of fighting is, you know, he can we can he can get his message across in the you know in the nothing's lost in well probably something's lost in translation, but we still get you know we still get it done, and me and him have just a, an awesome bond that's really built on a you know example. Because we're not, we, we don't, we don't get a talk, you know, and discuss like, uh, fights in depth, but what, what builds our bond is he shows up on time. I show up on time. We put in a grueling workout in this New Mexico in the summer at a hundred degrees, both pouring sweat. Uh, you know, we shake hands same time tomorrow and we go. So that, you know, the relationship with, uh, my boxing coaches, it's, it's pretty awesome and it's, and it's unique in its own right. You know, um, his name's Jose Lopez. I don't want to leave his name off here. Um, out in, uh, Jackson's Acoma up in Albuquerque, I, I hit, I hit that up, you know, once or twice a week. And, uh, my, uh, my main coach out there is, uh, Nick Urso. And, um, you know, he, he, uh, he's, you know, really fine tuning the smaller aspects of my game and, uh, teaching me, you know, things that I, 
you know, sometimes in fighting, it just takes, let's use jujitsu, for example, like a jujitsu, you get a real high level black belt and, you know, uh, maybe you're watching YouTube tutorials, whatever you're doing. And this black belt comes in there and he hits you with one tiny small detail and it, it, it improves your game more than, you know, all this other stuff. So that's what Nick does for me is he gives me these little details and the finer details of techniques and, and where, I, where I'm messing up. So, you know, those are probably my, my three main coaches. And, uh, over the years I've had so many coaches, Brian Tuala has been my, uh, you know, my go-to MMA coach for a long time until he had to take off. And, uh, Seth Eifert, he's my jujitsu coach. We, we roll, you know, once or twice, three times a week. And, uh, so, you know how MMA is. You got a, a thousand coaches, but um, you know each one I have a special, unique relationship with, and uh, they all mean the world to me. Do you plan out everything yourself throughout the week? Are you kind of uh, setting your schedule, or do you have the your coach doing everything? Yeah, um, I plan. I plan the the workouts. <laughs> I plan my schedule. I, you know, I uh, I I do what I think I need to work on, and. Uh, you know, really also I just take advantage of the times I have with different people. So, um, uh, if someone is available, you know, and they want to get some work in, I'll get some work in. I, I got my, my routine and then, um, I don't mind getting some extra in here and there. Uh, I, I really like to, you know, focus on a lot of, I, I, a lot of boxing and, uh, and then, uh, jujitsu and wrestling at the end of the week. And then I do my own strength and conditioning and, uh, nutrition. So, you know, I, I kind of run in, run in the ship in that regard. You go in, you know, you finish Morales, Dana White, he gives you that contract. You join the lightweight division. You know, what do you bring to the division? What makes you different inside, inside and outside the cage? You know, um, uh, what you know? What makes me different is I, I'm I'm finishing. I've only uh, had one fight that I didn't finish, you know. And uh, I got in that fight, I broke my finger. So like, I feel like maybe I would have got the finish if I didn't. Um, uh, I think I throw really heavy shots, and I think my boxing is uh, on a very high level. So you know, at the lightweight division, I think um, that style of uh, heavy hands and 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 good boxing is uh, is what's going to set me apart and make a difference. And then um, you know, outside the cage, I don't I don't know, you know, like. I don't know how different I am. Uh, I like to I like to fight. I like to train hard. Um, you know, and uh, I'm I'm a family man. But you know, there's so many guys like that. I don't know if you know I'm some big personality or uh, something like that. I'm just you know this it is what it, it is what you get. You know. All right, man. Well, August sixth, Dana White's Contender yeah. Series, Las Vegas. Harvey, I appreciate the time and. Uh, Good luck on the fight and everything in your future, man. Hey, man, thank you. I uh, I really appreciate the interview, and uh, let's stay in touch.